Hey guys, it's Corbett from the Building Performance Workshop in front of the Tiny Lab. The Tiny Lab is about to be two years old and spring is in the air. I know some of you are under snow today, um, but it's good news, it's coming. And that means that I, it's time for me to check the combustion efficiency of our combustion appliances. Now, the Tiny Lab was built to be off-grid, both electricity-wise and uh, water-wise. And one of the things about keeping your electricity at a minimum is you can't use heat. Uh, so electric heat is going to kill your uh, processes in general. It's 100% efficient, which means that every bit of voltage and wattage you put into heating, you get actual heat out of that, but it's really expensive to do that. Uh, and it'll sap your battery bank, especially in a tiny house on wheels. We don't have many batteries. So what we do is use gas whenever you can. We have propane. Now we have two uh, appliances here. We've got a stove and we've got water heater. The water heater is on demand. We didn't do that because on demand is always better. We did it because it was the right application for this system. Uh, now, the things that we want to take care of as far as the combustion efficiency goes, we're trying to check out what the oxygen levels are, what the combustion air is doing, how uh, efficient it is at uh, producing actual heat, and also how much carbon monoxide it creates and making sure that that carbon monoxide goes outside. Now, the way we do that in any system is you create carbon monoxide by having dirty burners or burners with dust in the way or um, misaligned or having the calibration of how much oxygen is being supplied be incorrect. So what you want to do is clean and calibrate, making sure that the flame is the right size, etc. In a stove, very easy. All you have to do is you set the calibration of how much gas is coming out with the knob and you clean it on a regular basis. You just make sure that the uh, grate that the gas is coming up around is not filthy. On a water heater, it's a little bit more complicated. You can't get in there. You have nothing to do with how much gas is being supplied, how much air is getting to it, and all that stuff. So we want to test. To do that today, we're going to run a combustion efficiency test with a Wohler A450, which is a really cool new tool that I'm playing with that I'd like to show you. The Wohler A450 is what we're going to be using to analyze the flue gases coming out of that flue. Now that is from the water heater, which is inside my mechanical closet. And it's important that all gases go outside. That's why we have the kitchen exhaust hood going to outside. That's why we have this thing. This is an induced draft appliance. And so that means that it's got a fan that's actually pushing the air outside. Now this flue is so short that we're just going to test it right here instead of trying to drill in and get closer to the combustion source. Not that important. In general, what I'm doing at this point is talking to professionals. This tool is not something that most consumers are going to be interested in getting. Uh, and this kind of a test is prescribed in code. In general, you want this once a year just to make sure that your heating appliances are doing what they're supposed to be doing and not causing a safety concern. Inside the mechanical shed, you can see the demand water heater right here. This is one of the smallest made in the world, and this is appropriate for the size house and demand we have. We have one shower, one sink, as you know if you've watched the other Tiny Lab construction videos. Now, uh, in general, when the electricity is out, when our batteries are dead and we're on the road, we can still cook because we've got propane, but this thing has an electric starter on it. So it actually needs that electric spark to get it started, uh, which means that you can't use this water heater when you have no electrical power, which is a downside. But what's going to happen first when we uh, have a call for hot water, and by the way, it needs to be a certain amount of hot water. You can't turn it on the smallest little trickle. It has to have a certain uh, flow gallons per minute in order to say, oh, you need hot water. I get it. So we're going to start up the shower inside and we're going to get this thing on. Now we have the probe inside the flue so that it's before dilution air happens. Dilution air is when the gases come out and they start mixing with the ambient air, which is just outside air that's clean and nice and fresh. Uh, so we've got it in there and it's pointing into the stream of air that's shooting out that's already got all the combustion products in it. Now we can see on this nice big display all kinds of information. In fact, I'm not even using all the fields. Almost all the manufacturers nowadays are going bending over backwards trying to make their tools link up with your smartphone in your pocket, which is awesome. But frankly, one of the things I love about this tool is that you can see everything on one screen without hitting any buttons so that I can just look at it. If I want to, I can snap a picture of it with my smartphone. Uh, the app is great, but also you've got the access to the screen itself. You can see here that we've got more oxygen than we need. This number generally in a normal residential system is going to be down below 10%, which is fine. That's what the fan is doing, trying to push all of these combustion byproducts outside. We've got about 50 
parts per million of carbon monoxide. That's right on the line of where we start being a little concerned that it might need a clean and calibration. So this is uh, prescribed for this system. However, the air free, if you were to take out all the air and just know how much bulk carbon monoxide is being created, it's kind of a lot. Now this is an important number to be able to compare. In an oven situation, this is the same thing. You want to know how much overall carbon monoxide there is coming out without the fact that it's being diluted so much by so much of this air. This is kind of a volume uh, comparison. And you can see here that we have a temperature of 197 degrees. That number is a little high. That means that not all of the heat that's being created by this system is actually going into the water. A lot of it's coming out of this stack. Now, I've used a bunch of different combustion analyzers. Some of them are residential only. Some are commercial and industrial applications only. This one is good. It's got a wide range of possibilities. You can use it in small commercial and in residential, which is one of the other things I like about it. Now again, if you have gas that you're using to create heat for anything in your house, whether it's a tiny house or not, you should have these things being tested. So I hope that this has been educational for you. Look for the home diagnosis television show that's coming up soon. We are in post-production. We're moving forward. We have an agent. We have a production partner partner now in the PBS affiliate system. We have 15 sponsors on board and thank you to all of them right now on the screen. Please stay tuned for that. You can see the sizzle reel for that at homediagnosis.tv. I hope that you'll stay tuned for more videos from us here at Home Performance Channel. See ya.